Good morning. This is Pinky, the housewife, and good morning to everyone. Um, today is Sunday morning. Uh, we're here to remain to give you all my thoughts and opinion on the Love and Marriage Huntsville episode that just aired last night. You know, um, this was Mel's getaway trip, girls getaway. Okay. But before we get started, let me just say everything is alleged. This is my opinion. My opinion only in this video is made for educational purposes only. Now, uh, before we get started, let me just go ahead and help everybody. Uh, if you can go ahead and hit that like button. Um, before I get started, go ahead and hit the like button and then subscribe to the channel to keep updated with every time I post or go live or anytime I drop a new video. All right, guys. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. And I want to go ahead and thank you for doing that right now. So let's go ahead and get started with the matter at hand. Today, we're going to be talking about the getaway. Melanie's girls give a uh, getaway from me. This is Love and Marriage Huntsville. They call it season eight, episode number 14. Okay. Um, but before I get started with that, let me just say, if you all, for anyone that have not heard, the, the ratings have plummeted directly into the toilet. The uh, ratings was only 170. 170. Uh, 107, 70,000. That's bad. That's really, really bad. Um, I, and that was the ratings for the August 17th episode. So I don't know whether uh, they're going to be able to come back from this, but uh, we'll see. I don't think they will, but we will see because that's the lowest uh, ratings since the show was uh, started. It have never been that low. And I I, I, I think they all need to just, uh, like I always said, they need to find a job. You know, they need to get uh, start working. And we got all the um, men on the show. They don't work. They don't have a real full-time job. The ones that did, they already left the show which was uh, Big Lou, he's gone. Uh, they need to, uh, well, Courtney got a job, but the rest of them, the Martell, the Scotts brothers, they don't have a job. They don't work, allegedly, but it's, there's no allegedly in it. They just don't work. So they're gonna have to find a job with rating at um, 170, okay? Now let's go ahead and get on with the uh, girls trip. Melanie, um, and this is a trip that Melanie paid for herself. I doubt if, uh, in my opinion, but I doubt if uh, Carlos of the network, because Mel uh, paid for everything herself. She doesn't need their money. That's for them to do for the other cast members because they don't have a job. And the show barely pays them anything. They barely uh, make um, uh, for an episode. I'm not going to even discuss that. I, I did it previously. But they uh, make very little money, very little. Uh, they make less than people that work full time on a regular job. But anyway, um, so let's get uh, to Melanie's girls give a, uh, getaway trip from me. Okay. And this is the ladies. Uh, she's taking the ladies uh, to St. More out uh, of St. Thomas, they're going to St. Thomas. So she gave them all their bottles and everything the little bottles um, at the tasting, uh, Kimmy's tasting, small tasting in that shed she shed or that little shed that she had. Uh, they met up in a little sh uh, shed uh, previous episode, and Melanie gave them a gift, which which was a bottle with a where they had to open it. And it tells them exactly where they was going. So they was all excited. Now, this episode, they get to 
St. Thomas. The ladies arrived, all the ladies, they arrived in St. Thomas for their uh, girls' give, uh, girls trip. And I, they're surprised when they're at the airport that Melanie had invited Sonny to join them on that trip. So they're all surprised. And when I say surprised, um, Kimmy was floored. She could not believe Mel invited Sonny. Why not? Didn't, she, didn't Sonny help you when you was going through your cancel, uh, cancel, uh, can, cancel, cancer? Oh, Lord, you can tell I just woke up this morning. But anyway, I'm sorry about that. Girl. Going through your cancel, uh, cancer battle? Yes. She actually was there for you, and Melanie was too. But you're surprised that she invited her, but you also invited them, you and your husband invited them to have dinner with you all one night or lunch, whatever that was, to go I meet you all out. So why would this be a surprise? Okay. She have never done nothing to Melanie. So why not invite her? Okay. But anyway, uh, so they all get to the girls trip and I'm going to show you a small video on that. They all get there. Let me bring that video up for you guys. <clears throat> so, Melanie, when she have friends, she actually have her two best friends. That is... Dr. Shanita Foster and Lauren. Lauren is with her by her side every day. And so she has her two best friends there. They're just stepping out of the car. These are the first two people, I mean, three people that's there at the villa. So it's just Melanie, Dr. Uh, Foster, and then Lauren. So these are the three people that arrived first. And we expect that because Melanie is the one that planned the trip. She wants to get there first so she can get everything set up and planned and all the uh, room assignments and everything done first so we don't have a cat fight. All right. So you can see there that they just made it there. They're excited. They're giving each other high fives and hugs and everything. And you can probably see Lauren. She's over there. She's, you can barely see her. She's over there behind Melanie. Okay. But before they left anyway, uh, six days ago, I know it says five days ago, but it was uh, yesterday that I made this a little slide. So it says, uh, Melanie wishing Lauren a happy birthday. So that was a, right before they left. She got a happy, uh, well, that was, no, that was, um, that was five days ago. But the trip was planned for March. This trip was on in March. I should correct that. But look at Lauren and uh, Melanie uh, having a great time. Okay. And then uh, you see, um, so when they get to the uh, on the trip, they're going to have a sit down. Remember uh, that how they always do these uh, table settings. They did a table setting at Kimmy's house with uh, Maurice. And that table setting... Uh, what it was discussing, um, Kiki, um, Kiki, all right, whether she was back um, drinking again. So, and I called that the Last Supper, okay? That was the, what Tisha got baptized, you know, a back baptism that I called it. And um, so, and then they just recently uh, had another one at this uh, little shed that Kimmy and her husband Maurice had for a for a tasting. It, the shed was so tiny, tiny. They had barely room to move. And you couldn't barely get into the door without somebody moving out of the way. So you can step step inside the shed. Okay. Um, they had the walls covered uh, with black sheets to hide the. Uh, the fact that they was probably in a little shed or a little a garage or something. 
uh, a small one car garage or something like that. Um, but anyway, that that's why Melanie gave everybody their uh, surprise gift for the St. Thomas getaway. Okay, so we're going to uh, talk about that um, a little more. Now, also, once they get to the, uh, once Melanie and uh, her friend, Dr. Foster, and Lauren gets to the villa, they start um, planning everything, the rooms and room assignments and everything. And so Melanie had uh, them to, uh, their rooms planned first, the, uh, Melanie's room, which is because she's the host. And then uh, Lauren got the room, the next room, which was a big, beautiful room as well. And then uh, Dr. Foster got one. So all of them got these uh, big, beautiful rooms, right? And but she had to sign the rooms for the for the rest of the cast. Now I'm not going to call these cast members ladies because they're in my book. None of these women are ladies ladies at all. They more like snakes. So she planned the um, rooms assignments for the rest of the cast of snakes. All right. So she planned Tisha, which is up at the right. Tisha, Kimmy. With a the one with a tongue sticking out of her, her mouth <laughs> and and everything. Tisha and Kimmy a room together with Destiny. Now Destiny, uh, she's not on the trip yet because this is just day one. So Destiny, she's the other snake, right? She's not going to show up until I think the next day or a day later. But she wasn't on this episode at all. Okay, so we're going to get back to the first snakes. Okay. So Tisha, Kimmy, and Destiny room was, put, so they got a room together, which was three beds and a room together. And y'all going to hear all the fallout about that. Okay. Now, and then the next person she planned was for Stormy and Toilet, uh, what's this woman's name with the big, big hair all up in the front with a Face got that, mm -hmm, that manly face. Uh, what's her name? Tisha. Um, Tisha. I think it's Tisha. I can't remember because they got so many. Ooh, you got a Tisha. You got a Tisha. But both of them. Sometimes I think everybody call them toilet paper. But anyway, storm, stormy and toilet paper. Tish assigned together. Because I guess they know each other. So she put them in a room together. Okay. Now there was no malice in doing this. She just doing it by, because that's what she got left. So that's how she's going to plan your room. What you think? She's going to make up a room, build a room onto the villa for you? No. Okay. Now, and then because uh, Nell is the next person they go to. Mel is the oldest woman there. The oldest out of everybody there. So she gives Nell a room to herself. Okay. And then after that, and then since uh, she did invite Sonny and Sonny is the women are not feeling Sonny at all. And I don't know why. Because Sonny did not do anything to you all but help you and, and be, be nice to you. But because they are team Destiny and writing for Destiny. And Destiny didn't like neither one of these women when she first came on the show. She had an issue with um, Stormy. She had an issue with Tisha, Kimmy, all of them. And she don't even like uh, the new girl, the one that looks like a man face with the hair bun. She don't even like her which is Tisha. And I don't, and, and she may like, I guess she likes Nell. I don't know. You never know about these women. But anyway, they're all riding for, for destiny. So they're acting like they're in high school because none of these, uh, Sonny have never done anything to these women, right? So they're all, did not speak to Sonny when she gets to the airport. Okay, none of them. I think Nell extended a hug to her. 
None of them would speak. And she actually spoke to each one of these women separately, called them by name, and not one of them spoke to her. You know that? Death's telling. These are grown women acting like a, a bunch of 16-year-old or 15-year-old high school girls. And let me say, most time, 15 and 16-year-old girls act a lot better than these women. They have a lot more class, okay? But these are older women, old women, okay? These women are all older than male, okay? Male is the younger one out of the whole bunch. And these women are older than their hosts, okay? Now, and even Tish just got on the show, only been there just for, uh, what, two or three episodes. She had already start uh, acting acting out and acting your food with male. She, she can speak loudly when she's there at the girl's trip, but she can't speak when she's at home back in Huntsville. Okay. So we're going to talk about that later, but anyway, so they all, uh, Mel and, uh, her two friends, uh, Dr. Foster and Lauren, they all, uh, do the uh, room assignments and they're sitting down enjoying themselves, uh, at the villa, uh, having drinks and just enjoying themselves, uh, after getting everything set up and everything. And then the women, uh, uh, gets there, they arrive, they come upstairs, uh, they come up into the villa and then M Melanie, uh, explains to them that she and I take them outside, uh, by the pool and explains to them that she and already, uh, each, first of all, she always welcome everybody there. She welcomes them, give them each a hug. I mean, she actually give them all a hug. Now, I'm not saying some. She actually welcomes them all, even the two T's, the Tisha and the Tisha. She gives them all a hug, even Stormy, all of these snakes, okay? Now, and then uh, Dr. Foster uh, does a toast and everything. Everybody get a drink. She gives them a toast. Uh, she says a toast and everything. Uh, Melanie want everything to be positive and, and fun and enjoyable and everything. So when she tells um, her two besties, Melanie tells her two besties, says to them, um, they all been on a vacation maybe, but not a Melanie's vacation, not a vacation the way she does it, okay? And that is true. They not all have had a, well, maybe, I don't even think um, they'll probably vacate like Melanie, but maybe close to it. But the rest of them, no. You know, they're not used to going out of the country. They're not used to uh, traveling uh, uh, top of the lines, having five-star restaurants and and villas and places to stay, you know. But anyway, so they all get there. Beautiful scenery. I mean, the place is just gorgeous. Uh, blue, blue waters, uh, skies, the weather, the palm trees. The villa is just amazing, you all. That villa is. And if you saw it once before, look, this is the villa, that beautiful white villa. And they showed a villa on the uh, show with the other villas. And this one looks like it was as big as the rest of them. And I think it's probably one of the biggest ones because this is huge. This is humongous. And then they have that infinity uh, blue water uh, swimming pool. Oh, gosh, this is beautiful. Okay. But also now, so Melanie tells them the rooms have already been assigned while they're all standing by the pool. Uh, she had already signed, assigned to rooms and for them to, uh, they can go ahead and the rooms are already assigned with a card. Their names are on, in the rooms or on the rooms. So they all rush out to go find their rooms, you know, hood like, right? So they all go and try to find a room. And I think, who is the finds a room first? Ooh, I think... Mm, I can't remember, but I, maybe, I think it's maybe Sunny. I'm not sure. Uh, the first room is pretty, I think it is Sunny, maybe. 
So they, well, they all find their rooms. Uh, Sunny is pretty happy with her room. Everybody is happy except for Tisha, Kimmy, because they find their room and realize that, which is, a, that's a big room. Because that room has three beds. But when Melanie and uh, her besties were standing, deciding that room, you can look at that room. That's a very nice size room, big size room that has three beds. So she puts Tisha, I mean, Tisha and Kimmy's name on the bed, on their beds, and leave one bed unassigned with a name because she said that's Tisha's uh, plus one, which Melanie still don't know it's destiny. She's going to be surprised that it's destiny's. Uh, it's the uh, plus one. Okay. So, and now Tisha is going to try to make Mel out to be a liar. Okay. A complete liar. And, and we're going to go over that. Okay. But anyway, so once she uh, assigns the rooms and everything, and they go find it. Kimmy and Tisha is not happy because they are, sh are sharing rooms. They, I guess, expect to be treated like they are royalty because they've been knowing Mel for so long. Okay. But you all have been, you've been torturing the woman for all those years and jealous and envy of the woman for all those years. So don't expect to be treated like you all uh, should get a big five star room. No. OK, but anyway, Mel did what she could with what she had. OK, now also then you come to uh, Tisha and Stormy. Stormy wasn't I don't think she was a little taken back by the room. It didn't bother her. Right. And, you know, because at her house, she got a nice size, big size room in her house. But you got to look at Kimmy and Tisha. Tisha used to sleep in in small houses with tiny rooms. And we have seen that, you know, she don't have room to move around and she don't have a big master suite. She just got a regular size bedroom for a master room. And she used to sleep in an apartment of small two bedroom apartments, you know? So she's not used to going somewhere, having big, large rooms and big being standing villas. So in Kimmy too, as well, because you know Kimmy hardly ever goes on a vacation. I, during the whole time that they've been on the show, uh, her Maurice only took her on a, a vacation when they went on their honeymoon. And that was like five years later, after they got married. That he was, he had to marry her because of the show. But so she only went on a vacation. He only took his wife on a vacation one time, so that we know of, you know, and that wasn't even paid by him. So go figure. They're not used to traveling like Mel. Like Mel said, you all don't travel like me. Okay. Well, she didn't say that. I'm saying it. But anyway, so she's letting them know that uh, the room's already been assigned. Uh, but the only people now, when they get there, let me just say this when they get there, uh, Nail. Miss Nell, I had a blowout fit. She was highly upset, highly mad, angry, acting a fool, screaming that, and coming at Mel because she could not find her room, and because because there was a, a mistake where her name card wasn't printed like the rest of the women. So Melanie just went on and signed her a room by herself, a very beautiful, big room, very spacious, big room by herself. She should have been proud, but instead she just going to act, 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 just clown and yelling at Mel and coming at Mel. And Mel was trying to calm her down, talk to her. Well, you know, I wouldn't do you like that. I respect you and I love you. You know, I am always there when you call me was trying to calm her down, but Mel, uh, Nell wasn't having it. Nell was, it took a while to calm it, and I don't think she ever got calmed down, but Melanie tried to explain to her, you got your own room, because you're the oldest other group of all the ladies here. She gave her a big, nice room by herself. Oh, she didn't take that well. Nell didn't take that well either. She came at Mel thinking Mel is shading her, 
and think Mel did the not having her name made, uh, name tag made uh, on purpose. And Nell tried to explain, Melanie tried to explain to her, but she wasn't having it. But anyway, you know, so she, I, she was acting more like a high school uh, 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 woman over the fact that she didn't have her name printed out because she wanted to have her name printed out and sitting on her bed, her name tag sitting on her bed like everybody else. Oh gosh. But look at it. You got a big, beautiful room now. So calm down. But anyway, and then so they uh, all uh, got drinks, were sitting around. Kimmy and Tisha went outside to complain. So once the, uh, once, once, you know, once they got to the villa and everybody got a, their rooms and stuff, Kim and Tisha go outside uh, to complain, okay, about the room assignments that Mel assigned them to. They're not happy. And Tisha talking about how Mel chose that room because of how she feel about them. They know how she feel because she put them in tiny rooms. Girl, that room was big. The beds was nice size, okay? So bigger than the bed in the rooms that you have at your own house, okay? So I don't know why she's complaining, but she she wants to have something to complain about. And I really do believe that Tisha had no intentions on letting this girl trip be a place where she can go and have fun and enjoy herself and, and think and be grateful that she's that Mel invited her. I, in my opinion, by the way they acted, Kimmy and Tisha acted. They was pouting, acting a fool. So Sonny, uh, Sonny told Mel that they're out there. Kimmy and Tisha is very upset over their room assignment. So Mel goes outside, goes out to find them, and she takes them outside. Uh, she, well, they're already out. She goes out with them. Uh, and they go out and stand by the railing, uh, the banisters, okay? Uh, beautiful, beautiful scenery from behind them. And they was, Mel want to know what's going on and what's uh, what they're so upset about and what's going on. Because that's what she heard. That storm, uh, uh, Sonny, she actually said, Sonny told, said that they're, they're upset to make sure nothing getting misconstrued, okay? And they were saying that uh, that their room assignment, Kimmy explained to her that she would expect more from uh, them. And Tisha, too, said, Tama, she's disappointed. But anyway, Kimmy said, by the number of years that we've been knowing you, I expect more from you that you would have done better by how long we've been knowing you, our relationship with you. Uh, I, I, you know, it took me sideways because I'm thinking how are you going to expect her to give you all the best rooms when y'all treated her like trash you you was you was teen Martell bashing Mel and believing everything that he said about her and not once showed Melanie any grace during those four years of that hard time with that demon husband of hers how would you Expect her to give you the best rooms. She gave you what rooms without being mean or malice. She gave you those rooms by your 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 coming to the villa. Both both of you all are uh, a family. You all both married to husbands uh, that are brothers. Then you all uh, then teach you bringing a plus room. Uh, plus one. So she got a room that got three beds in it. Perfect for, for the situation. Okay. So she gave you that room. Okay. Gave them that room. And so they're just not having it, not understanding it. And Tisha straight out calling Mel a liar. She didn't say she, she uh, that uh, it could be a mistake or whatever, or except what Mel is saying to her. She is actually saying Mel lied, a liar. And so I'm actually going to drop that little, uh, that little, um, 
conversation that she had, that little part that she said that, but she actually called Mel a liar. I, it, it, it was beside me to hear that and see her doing that. You know what I mean? But so Tisha really called her a liar. And then uh, Kimmy was right with her. And then uh, so Mel was trying to explain to her how she came uh, up with the room assignment based on the fact that their family, she had three beds in one room. And that's uh, then Tisha had a plus one. And since they were not having it, uh, Sonny inside, while that was going on outside, Sonny inside decided to share that um, Mel is outside trying to uh, see what's going on with Tisha and Kimmy and and suggest that someone need to go out there and check on check on the situation or check on Mel. Okay. So that's when uh Nell, Nell Fletcher decides she's gonna go out there. I guess because she's been knowing all three of the women. She knows all three of the women, been knowing them the longest. So she goes out there and she's she's the older one in the group, the oldest lady in the group. Or but anyways, so she goes out there. And when she gets out there, now I got to remember when she came in, she was already pushing a hundred. She was on a hundred. She was lit, fire coming out of her head. But anyway, because she already went off on mail. She wasn't too kindly to nobody, but and then she was taken aback that Sonny had came on the trip too. So, but let's get to the part that. She, since she was so upset with all that, she walks out and try to, uh, you know, calm the situation, get in between them and calm this, get in between uh, Mel, Melanie and Kimmy and Tisha to calm the situation. But it seemed like Kimmy wasn't having it, nor Tisha. Kimmy came at her and, and then so did Tisha. And, you know, Nell ain't going to take nobody coming at her and disrespecting her. So she goes back at him. But once she realized, wait now, they're they're not taking it well. So Mel tried to appeal her back and and diffuse the situation. But then Kimmy kept coming at her and, and Tisha. So, you know, Nell is not going to back down. And Tisha put her hands on Mel by talking about grabbing at her, uh, sh uh, her top, pulling it up, talking about she's showing a nipple. Oh, Nell didn't like that. You don't grab on her. You don't put your hands on me and then you're yelling at me at the same time. Okay. So Nell didn't like that. And I don't blame her because Tisha didn't do it out of respect. She did it out of uh, meanness. She was trying to be shady and mean when she did it, the way she did it and the way she touched her. She could have did it in a better way. Okay. But anyway, uh, so it was a whole hoopla, whole heap lot of mess going on out there. N Melanie just stood back and just decided to let them, you know, go at it because that's not her fight. Okay. She's the peacemaker. This is her trip. She wants everybody to have fun. But but Kimmy and Tisha already had, a, in my opinion, they already had a game plan set up with um, Destiny, the, the, the one that's not there yet. Okay, so they already have a game plan set up with Destiny right here. So that's because the way they're acting, the way they're coming together, attacking Mel all at the same time, and the things that they're bringing up, they're there to attack, to ruin this, and, and they know that. Kimmy probably want to have a good time, but she still got that game plan with the rest of them, not to let uh to to throw everything in Mel's face to try to make Mel look bad but she still want to munch off uh, Mel's vacation St. Thomas vacation and Tisha she just there just because she she's she is dark in the heart to have that dark heart she is there just to wreak havoc she's there as a demon snake only she's not there she's not there in the goodness of her heart although this is a type of vacation that she would never get in her lifetime she's not worried about that 
She's worried about trying to ruin this for male. That's it. Okay. Now, in my opinion, this whole episode only had three scenes. One scene is when they came uh, getting to the villa, arriving to the villa and, um, and finding their room assignments. The next one is, uh, is the uh, fighting over the room assignment. And then the last one is the dinner at the table. That's it. But I would say that the room assignment took up, I mean, when they arrived to the villa and getting their room, took up over 31 minutes. Nothing but chaos going on from these women. Chaos. Okay. Now, even Tisha, the new girl, the one that looks like a man in the face with the big hair all on top of her forehead, she even started uh, coming, showing that the fact that she is as vile as Tisha, you know, because she's the one is Martell's other side chick that we didn't know about. You know, Tisha is uh, Martell's other side chick that we did not know about, allegedly. But ain't no allegedly because she had already said, uh, Martell already said it, you know, and she confirmed that she already been to his home, you know. But she she didn't confirm that until it was uh, brought out. So she had no other choice but to admit it because Martell is dropping uh, the tea on her. But anyway, so I think th th there was a game plan between uh, Tisha, I mean, not Tisha, Kimmy, Tisha, and Destiny. They got together at Kimmy's house and planned to destroy this trip for Melanie, to make Melanie look worse. And I think Martell had something to do with all this, the uh, the way it's coming out, the things that they're saying, and the tea that Destiny is going to bring to the table when she shows up next week. But anyway, so on this girl trip, uh, it was chaos, chaos, chaos for the room assignments. Now, let's get to the... Uh, Let's get to the dinner. So that evening they had dinner, okay? At the table, everybody, it was no assigned seating, so everybody sat where they want, but Melanie sitting at the head. And then next to her, uh, from the head of the table was Dr. Foster. And then Lauren sitting next to Dr. Foster. Then you got, uh, you got, uh, you got Stormy, Tisha, Kimmy, uh, Tisha, the new girl, you got, um, Nell, you got all them all at the table, plus Sonny down at the end, okay? If you notice, I haven't been bringing up Sonny as much because Sonny is cool. Sonny haven't been in no, no hoopla, haven't, although the girls in the very beginning of uh, when they saw her at the, at the uh, airport, throw her shade and shade all on the uh, bus coming because she, uh, yeah, let me just say this, on the bus trip there on the, uh, sprint on the bus or the sprinter she uh, mentioned because it was brought up by uh because horn stormy was having a conversation but she brought up the fact that she is going to do ibf with her husband moses okay and she she's doing a split i i don't know exactly but she i think she explained that as she had tried tr twice and stormy mentioned that's uh she is going through something similar because she's getting a surrogate, uh, you know. But anyway, uh, and and seeing like, oh gosh, that broke Tisha the wrong way. But Tisha ain't got nothing to do with uh, Destiny and Moses and Sonny. So and Kimmy and Tisha, Tisha either. So I don't understand why they injecting themselves in somebody else's marriage when theirs is already falling apart. And Tisha, you got a, a husband or a, a boyfriend. You got a whole, you, you're a side chick yourself. And then you got Martell on the side too. You got two boy, two side. You got a, a a lover. You got a boyfriend and you got a husband, Tisha. That's the new girl. So, and Tisha, your husband allegedly got a baby, got two babies outside. And you was his side chick. And then he still got another woman that he takes on vacations to Africa and stuff and, and don't take his own family. And, and, and Kimmy, your husband, he fools around all the time, too. They, the two of y'all's husband fools around together with women. Y'all go on these trips with Martell 
And they got side, all of them got side chicks. And Kimmy, your husband just got caught drunk driving with lipstick all over him from leaving another woman's, you know, before he got locked up. And he known to sleep around in the boom boom room. And Tisha, your husband too. So I don't understand. And you, even your mom confronts your husband about sleeping around, fooling around on you. So, and everybody been telling you, you need to go follow him at night and see where he's going. Girl, y'all, y'all doing the most. And, and, and now, you know, your husband, you, you know, Fletcher got him another woman. Allegedly, he had a baby on the way, but that's allegedly with Fletcher. But anyway, I don't understand. But so at the table, they all decide they want to come at Melody. OK, at this table. So Melanie is sitting at the head of the table. She's standing on her business. And all the women that stands on business at this table is no more than these four women here. These four beautiful women all are standing on business. Melanie, she's a boss and everybody knows. She has several businesses on her own network, everything. Very successful, millionaire, multi-millionaire. Dr. Shanita Foster is also standing on business. Very successful. Very. She travels the world just like Melanie, doing her thing and have businesses as well. Very successful. Very wealthy woman. And then you got uh, Sunny here over to the uh, left with the black hat on. She's doing the same. She's a businesswoman. She's flipping houses. She's uh, a producer. She was a producer for the Love and Marriage Huntsville. Uh, I mean, this woman came in running businesses on the show and still showing herself running her businesses on the show. And the only reason they're mad at her is because she, uh, Destiny Man, boyfriend, dropped her and because she wasn't doing, she wasn't, producing. She she was lazy. She didn't want to work. She didn't work. She's fooling around on her own husband. So he didn't want a side chick that he hadn't had for 15 years while he was already married. He want to, he want, when a man ready to get married, he don't marry the side chick. When they, and Martell already proved that. He didn't have married his side chick over 10, 12, 13 years or whatever. He haven't married her. So why would uh, Moses, Moses marry um, Destiny, he decided to level up, choose Sunny, a woman beautiful and successful. Okay, that's not a side chick, never been a side chick, as she says. And then we got Lauren here, which is Mel's right hand. Uh, happy birthday, Lauren. Um, uh, she's also about her business, and she, when Mel runs Melanie's Empire, you know. They're running this company. Oh, she's Melanie's right hand. Everywhere you see Melanie, you either see uh, Lauren Witter or uh, Dr. Foster Witter, you know, just saying. And then Sonny want to get to know Melanie uh, better anyway, because Melanie is like her. She's doing like she's doing, you know. But uh, Melanie's on a bigger scale, but still. These are women that are standing on business, while the rest of the women on the show are nothing but a group of snakes, venomous snakes, dog-hearted snakes. And also, when you got, uh, like Melanie, have her true friends with her, her true friends, is this is what true friends look like. They're going to support you when you're down. They're going to be there. They're going to support you no matter what, no matter what somebody say, they're going to always support you. They're going to believe in you. They're going to respect you. Okay. Show respect at all times. They're going to be your cheerleader. When you're down, things are going wrong. Or even when you're happy, they're always cheerleading for you. They're going to show you love at all times. That's how all of this comes. The true friendship is out of love. They're going to show you love. Now, they're not going to pretend like they love you. 
or say, oh, girl, I love you, and then stab you in the back the next moment. No, they're going to trust you, and you're going to have trust for them. You can trust what you say. They're going to trust what you say, and then you can say things to them, and they're not going to go and spread it the minute you are gone to the rest of the women. They're not going to hurt you. There's no hurt involved. They're not there to hurt you at all. They're going to be committed to you and committed to their friendship. They're going to show you kindness when the world shows you harshness or when you got an ex-husband that's treating you wrong. They're going to give you, extend that hand of kindness to you no matter what. They're going to protect you from people like uh, these women. They're going to protect you from the uh, destinies right here. They're going to protect you from the Tisha, from the Kimmies, from the Stormies, from the Nails, and the new girl, which is Tisha. They're going to protect you when these vile snakes come at you. Just because they're, these women are jealous, envies. They envy. They want to be you. They want to be like you. They're going to protect you. And they, they're going to be there through the best of times and through the worst of times. They're going to be, it's just like a marriage. They're going to be there no matter where, whether you're sick, not sick, where you're happy, sad, no matter what, doing your ups and downs, childbirth, non-childbirth, they're going to be there. When your husband acting a fool with you, they're going to be there. Okay? That's what real friends look like. So at the table, when Tisha, T uh, Letitia started coming at Melanie, the first thing, because Tisha, uh, Tisha was coming at Melanie with, and just, you can see it in her face, the the, the vow things and the rudeness and the connivingness coming out of her. Ooh, it was like a devil being, you can see the devil in her. What did the, uh, her, uh, Melanie's best friend, Dr. Foster said, she said, watch her at first. Before she said, I said, watch her. She said, watch her. Okay. Then Tisha kept coming back at her, kept coming back at her. And everything they had conversations around the table, and uh, and uh, Dr. Foster, Shanita Foster said that I don't even know this woman, I don't even know this woman, and I already know who she is, she had already told me who she is. She had read that, she had read her like a book, Shanita read her like a book. She don't even know Tisha and she and already know who she is. And she said, I said, told Melon again, I said, watch her. Okay. And then, uh, and then somebody, uh, I think, um, uh, Nell brought up the fact that, um, Destiny would be coming on the trip too. It, it, that's, um, Tisha's plus one. You can tell Mel was shocked. Everybody was shocked around the table except for the snakes. They already, they they knew, except for uh, Melanie's friends. And when I say Melanie's friends, I mean this group of women. They didn't know, but the snakes, they knew. So when uh, Nell brought it up, Tisha said, yeah, since she's part of the group, I decided to make her my price one since she's part of the drill. You know, she didn't say it like that. You know, she's, she got, remember, she talks like a mom. It's hard to understand what she, this woman says. You have to have your dictionary out when Tisha or her mother, her mom, Wanda, talks, okay? So, and then uh, uh, the snake Tisha said, uh, you know, Mel, I sent you a text. I text you. And Melon is looking at her, you know, giving her a look. No. Because, you know, Mel don't, Mel don't, there's a different phone that Mel use when she contacts these women. And so when these women send texts back to Mel, Mel normally, probably, in my opinion, don't receive those texts because Mel don't have no communications with these women unless she's filming with them. Because she goes into her zen place because she have to take a, a break a mental break from these demons when she's around them. Okay. So unless she's filming with you, she don't talk to you. There's no communication allegedly. Okay. Now, so this is the text that Tisha brought up 
and you can see it. I put it up here so you can see it. It's March 14th at 7.04 p.m. She said, hey, ma'am, I would like to let you know Destiny is going to be my plus one. And then she said, I hope you're okay with that. I don't want it to be a surprise. Oh, yes, she do. And then she put a, a little emoji that looks like a little heart emoji, pink heart emoji. And she knows she was planning that on purpose. She that was a purposely act. Purpose. But, and I put no, 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 because uh, what do you do if you don't receive a confirmation from mail? The answer is there's a no for it. Whatever you want mail to do or whatever you ask a mail is a no. Because if a person do not receive that or, or see that email or not respond to your email, you don't expect that is a go ahead to do whatever you want. Okay? So if you don't receive a confirmation email, Tisha, Leticia, the first step you need to do is contact that person either by phone or if you can't get them by phone, maybe try to uh, see, can you contact them to set up something in person or uh, meet that person in person in some kind of way, okay? To confirm whether it's okay for Destiny to come on that trip. That should not be a surprise that Destiny shows up. And you should not give Destiny the expectation that Mel is happy to have her there or expecting her to show up on her girl's trip. Because, and you knew that you did not receive a confirmation text back, but you decide to go ahead and extend it and, and everything. And like I said, I think Melanie, Melanie is being set up by Tisha, Kimmy, and Destiny. Because when Destiny comes on the trip, she comes with a t-shirt on with her own face on it. I, I don't know whether it's a mugshot or what, but it's her face on that t-shirt. What woman walks around with her own face on that t-shirt? That means she's coming with an agenda. Tisha came with an agenda. Uh, uh, Kimmy came with an agenda. And the agenda is to destroy and disrupt this trip. And make sure this trip is not happy. That Mel, they're there to to take down mail by any means necessary. If it means for them and nobody else to enjoy that trip, okay? So guys, that's the uh, trip. And I guess they're gonna have part two. I'm not, another part to this, I'm not sure. But thank you guys. I hope y'all enjoy that commentary. And if you, and I'll be coming back with the uh, next part of it. Go ahead and hit that like button if you didn't hit it before and subscribe to the channel. You all have an enjoyable day. Bye-bye.